Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the show, which will be about base 64 encoding, because there are actually multiple ways that we can be 64 encode or payloads or messages. So we use base 64 when we want to send something over the line usually, if you want to transfer and say say this is exactly what we want, these are the exactly, uh, this is the exact data that we want, then we usually base 64 encode it because then we are sure that local characters will not ruin the whole uh, package. And um, uh, yeah, so that is, that is why we use base 64 encoding. It is to, to transfer over the line, but there are actually, there are multiple standards. One of the standards is the default one, which is just the encoder, uh, like this. This is the, then you, you can say big space 64, get encoder, and then we can encode it to some uh, encoded string. So just to give you an example right here, this is my message right here. And of course, uh, I have a lot of local characters right here, and I have uh, some spaces and a lot of things like that. So that can be a bit difficult for the receiver to actually get a message like this. When is the message done? Uh, yeah, uh, well, well, what, what is this, right? So then we can in base 64 encode it, and then we can, let us just print this one out right here. Let us let us just print out the message right here. And the problem with uh, this version of, the, uh, of the, the, the problem with the default base 64 encoder is actually that it's not your else safe. You can see we get this string right here. This is a weird string, but there are no spaces, as you can see. We don't have any spaces in it, um, which is quite good. We don't have any local characters. That means that anyone can actually take this message right here, store it somewhere, and then um, yeah, uh, and then that, that, that's it, right? So that that is why we we like to be 64 encoded. But um, <clears throat> let's say that we want to send it over the line. Then the default base 64 encoding is not URL safe. That means that you can actually have some uh, percentage signs, which means if, like percentage uh, 20 if you have a space. Um, and that will uh, that will then uh, create an error. If you're trying to send, let's say you're trying to send uh, uh, to some URL, like uh, maybe you have some URL, uh, Mike's uh, server, uh, .dk or something like that, right? And, or Mike's site, .dk, and then you have... Uh, uh, some endpoint, and then you use the, uh, the the query parameters. You use request parameters. Then you can have um, some interesting uh, some interesting stuff equal to. And then and then here's the problem: if you just use the regular base sixty four encoding, then you could actually get a, a percentage sign, and you can also get like a minus. Um, and that is the the, the the cool part about getting. Um, yeah, that is the cool part about using the your LSafe encoding instead. So what does it, what does your LSafe part actually does? It actually it replaces the plus um, with a minus, and and I'm looking at this is not something that I can remember uh, from heart. So this is, I'm looking at an article and I'll, I'll show you the article in just a minute. Uh, it will replace the forward slash with the underscore. This means it's also file name safe. Um, so it will take all of the uh, forward slashes and then re replace it with underscores instead. And the uh, article that I'm uh, glancing at right here, then let me just show you that one. If you go to base64.guru, then there's a lot of cool, lot of cool information about the standards and information about how uh, yeah uh, how how the your, the base your 64 encoding actually works and what it actually uh, which character it actually uses for um, uh, yeah uh, as a source uh, or uh, yeah as destination and of course also source when you want to decode it again. Um, so but here. Here are the rules that you have right there. So go go visit base 64 Google just uh, for fun, but also there's a lot of cool information about base 64 encoding right here. So that is the reason we also don't want uh, certainly that there should be some uh, four slashes in the uh, or something like that. That's also not good in, in our URL right here. Um, let us then. Uh, so that was the base 64 encoding. Now let us try to encode it with the. Let us, let us try to create a new uh, another encoder. This is the this will be the URL encoder instead. So now we're using the URL encoder. URL encoder. Let us use the URL encoder. It's right there. So here we'll say URL encoder, and this is then another string. Uh, URL encoded. And then we'll see if we can see any difference right here. I don't think we can actually see anything. Um, right here but let's try so 
let us try. Let us run our test again. So this is just a unit test. In these cases right here, the yeah, the the the, the result is actually exactly the same. So there's no problem in this string right here, um, which is fine, which is cool. Um, but you could end up with a problem if you end up with something that results as um, um, if you get something that results in those in, uh, with, with those characters uh, that that will give us trouble like uh, uh, plus and forward slash and let's uh, uh, yeah and and minus so let us just check right here it is still exactly the same but that is okay as as soon as you have a project where you have this discussion where people start discussing which encoding which encoder should actually be used then um then the first thing you would actually do is that you would actually, if you were Spring Boot, then you would go and create your own base64 factory or something like that, or base64 encoder helper or something like that. You would create your own, uh, you, you would wrap your 64 encoding in um, in a service or just in a utility class like I have right here, and then you will place your encoder encoding right there. So this means that this this factory right here it actually takes a string, and then it have it also has an encoding. Um, so this is also something that you have to uh, agree on if you want to use UTF-8 or, what, or not. Or maybe you have another uh, code set that, charges it, that, that should be used. Um, the most common one is like is UTF-8. Um, so, so in this situation, I've wrapped both the decode and encode part. That means that suddenly if someone comes um, in project and say, hey, now we're using another encoder, we're using the, the base encoder instead, then you can just go and change one line here and one line there and then then you're happy again, right? Uh, just for fun, let us actually see if it actually works. So I'll just create a new test, and then I'll say um, void uh, try the uh, factory, like this. And then I'll say new Mike space 64 factory, and then we will say we need some kind of source string. So source string, um, let me just see if I can find a cool long source string. Um, Long source string for testing base 64 encryption. Um, so let me just see if I can get a good test example of a long string right here. Um, so Test data for testing. Let me just check. I have a good. Um, that's a good way of actually generating data. Of course, you couldn't. Could there's a. Um, yeah, in old days you could use something called the the Java Faker. It's not. Uh, there was some point it was actually removed because the author did not get any support. So. He removed his, his code at some point. Um, but it's still out there in an older version if you want to use that part. Um, so. Oh, I'll just take some weird stuff from. Um, I'll just take some weird stuff from uh, Wikipedia. So here we have a lot of weird stuff. And then we say, please encode that source string. Stringer. What is the matter there? And then encode it. Like this. So now it's encoded. But then we can print it out. Encode. Like this. And then of course, then we should be able to decode it again. So that's always a good test to, to do. Mike's factory. And then we can put the encoded value in right there. And then we can say decode the, that string. And then we can say decode it again. And then the decode it, we can then assert, we can assert that, um, no, thank you very much. Mm. And nice timing, by the way. So here we say, uh, then we say that the source, we expect that the, the, the source string should also be what we actually decode right here. 
<clears throat> so, let us run it. I don't know why I cannot find the source string right here. Is it because, uh, because I misspelled it? That's why. Okay. So, let us try to run again. And the decode part, I guess the decode code part does not work. So we take the encoder, we take the encoder string, and then we say decode. Yeah, decode, there, there, here we have the bottom decode. Get your L encoding. Get your L decoder. Decoder, let's write that. And then we say decode. Then that's a source. We don't have to give it anything else. But um, so here we have a source or target. And then we can then return that. And that is then a byte, byte array. You know, a byte array is nothing, there's nothing magical or scary by the byte array, it's just a, an array of numbers. So that just represents the characters, so that is the, the byte. So let us just return that actually. And one related problem that is of course the test now needs. And here we can then say, if we want to, then we can say new string. And we can say UTF-8 like this. And now let us try to run our tests to see if um, if the base64 encode and decode, yes, it is now happy. So now it's the same string that we actually uh, get back. Yes, so that is quite good. And just for fun, then we can actually try to decode without the URL encoder. Let us see if, if we're lucky to get an example that actually will fail then. Let us see. No, it's it's just still okay. It's still good. Okay, but this is actually what I just want I want to show you. If you are using, if you're sending data with uh, your request parameters, um, then use the URL decode, your URL encoder. Do not use the basic. Um, uh, do not use the standard base sixty four encoder and, and decoder. Um, have a great evening, and I hope to see you again uh, soon. Thank you very much. Bye bye.